Yeah, yeah we are ready. Okay. Bring it. Chickens um, it is. We, uh, the city staff asked if the commission would have some time after uh, this evening's regular session to talk very quickly, very briefly, uh, about two important policy matters to get your direction. As we just saw with two uh, ZTA applications at your previous regular session, we take the direction from you at these study sessions. So that's what ends up being proposed. Um, so we'd like to talk poultry again with you. Um, the, the commission held a policy discussion at your last study session, um, reviewed uh, input that the city staff received during a listening session with interested and concerned citizens. Um, we shared some example city code um, uh, requirements for poultry from our surrounding communities to give you an idea of what other communities, uh, how they've addressed the issue. And we received some direction from um, the majority of the commission on what you would like to consider. We wanted to bring back that little framework, not a proposal yet, just a framework, on potentially how the city could be a little more um, amenable, more permissive regarding the raising of poultry. So based on your feedback, um, we look at zoning standards, location, and we felt that raising poultry could be permitted in the agricultural district and the single family residential zoning district with no permit, but subject to certain standards. Those certain standards, as you will see, will limit the locations, the available locations for you. Um, neighborhood consent would not be required. It would be based on meeting the standards. Um, those standards would be a maximum of six chickens, only hens, no roosters. The chickens must be kept in a totally enclosed coop and run inside a totally fenced-in backyard. The coop and run must be kept a minimum of 10 feet from any property line and at least 50 feet from a residential structure occupied by someone other than the chicken owners. The coops and runs will be kept in good repair. Coops and animals will be kept in a manner that won't disturb neighbors. Absorbent ground cover will be provided and replaced as necessary to suppress odor and adequate lighting and ventilation uh, should be provided. No chicken processing would be permitted. If the size of the coop is greater than 110 square feet, thus requiring a building permit, the coop would be classified as an accessory use building and would have to meet the requirements of that in terms of numbers and lot area coverage. Code enforcement would be conducted on a complaint basis. So no permitting, meet the standards, code enforcement on complaint. We kept it simple. We kept it administratively feasible. Um, and we felt that we met the thoughts and comments that we were hearing from the majority of the commission. So again, not an actual proposal, but the, <laughs> these are the, the, the main points and standards that could be incorporated into a proposal. It would permit chickens, have to be kept at certain distance from property lines and houses that would limit a lot of, or some single family residential areas where the lot sizes just simply won't accommodate that based on setbacks. Um, the standards of keeping it in good repair, not disturbing neighbors, suppressing odor, that, that's subjective and it's going to be based just on a complaint basis for code enforcement. No permitting requirements and no restrictions. How would, uh, let's say for example, this was the case, I want to get chickens, how do I know what this is, and is there any way to confirm that I followed the, mainly the setbacks? If there's no permitting required, 
Um, we, we found some very good examples of informational flyers from surrounding communities as one pagers. Very catchy and very um, easily, easily read and understood. And we would just make those available. Uh, no permitting requirements, so no inspection requirements, so someone would just have to show that, that well, they wouldn't have to show it to anybody unless there was a complaint made. In terms of administration, administrative feasibility, we feel that that's the most appropriate manner to go. Otherwise, we're creating a new system of licensing and permit to be police and enforcement. Well, enforcement, that's your biggest thing. Like, so, yeah. so you get into complaints are being filed. Who shuts it down at that point? Once multiple complaints, chickens being out, they're not in the coop, they're not meeting setbacks. Like, how who is going to regulate? Oh, it'll be the city. So that that will be determined through community development and public safety, meaning. Code enforcement and, and animal control. Then, but, then, but that's the determination we make internally. That's yeah. administrative. So administrative, like infraction wise, after someone, like, I, for example, the short term rental, we have three infractions. If you break it, you're no longer, a, like, is it going to have those types of rules? And regulations that that could eventually be the result. But those don't need, need to be articulated because this would simply be violations of of zoning regulations or animal control regulations, however they're incorporated. I mean, you all know where I stand. So, at the end of the day. I have a couple of questions. If it's more checking out. Yeah, you got it. Where did we come up with the number six? Because last time we discussed this, there was a number that of communities around that had, and one of them was four. Why did, I mean, what caused us to go with six? Was um, there a rationale? Uh, the, the, it was just the rationale of what we felt were the most appropriate or similar examples we saw. Mm -hmm. So this was Liberty and Glasgow. They allowed six. That allowed up to six. Up to six. Gladstone actually says ten. I was going to say, Gladstone says ten. Oh, I'm sorry. And so, Liberty is six. Liberty was six. So, Maybe it's the... I think we just pretty much averaged. We like the Gladstone example, but we like the Liberty number. Okay. And then last time we did discuss the waste removal. The waste is produced by these chickens. Um, and the removal of that waste, you know, we talked about it can't go in trash cans, it can't go. Because somebody in the discussion with with Pete, Dr. Pete, they were somebody wanted the city to have a compost or something uh, for that yuck. Uh, is there something that we need to address in here about the removal of that waste? Uh, we or how would that be? You know, we did not feel that that would be a regulatory item that the city would have to regulate that. Okay. In, in terms of city code. Um, there are a lot of things. I mean, we oh. saw, again, just like short term rentals, we saw a lot of things that other communities have regulated. And we're, we were trying to present a concept. It's not a proposal, it's just ideas and a structure that could be feasibly administered if the community wanted to. I'm not saying it's not an issue, but not one that the city at this point would want to regulate beyond what the current standards are for disposal of human or animal waste. Now, I do notice one of the things in Lee Summit, I don't even know why I'm going down this picture hole, but uh, no dog or cat which kills a chicken running at large shall be considered a dangerous animal. Should we not incorporate if we end up proposing and adopting these because that's not fair to dogs and cats <laughs> that farm animal is in city limits. 
like, should we adopt those types of policies? Because I feel like this is going to open up can of worms either which way. Chickens are going to get out. Well, they're going to get out, and there's going to be cats, dogs, and others that could potentially get in. And then that's going to be then the issue. Well, that cat got in my yard, killed my chicken, so that cat ends up ball like it's just me. Well, yeah, well, again, another good point. Another item that could be part of a particular chicken, but it's a chicken that's just wanted for a farm. Uh, but the point on that is that is a determination that would be made by the animal control officer, and then that's more of an administrative interpretation. So we're not we're not going to apply that standard to if a domesticated animal having come from a chicken farm when I was a kid, we didn't have to worry about dogs or cats or anything bothering the chickens. The raccoons that. Like, but again, two yeah. words you said. But we're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, so same thing. We're not, we don't propose creating a regulatory description of what would be a dangerous animal would not be. Right. So a raccoon, dog, cat. If it's a domesticated animal and, and a chicken happens to walk into the yard where it's the dog is fenced and maybe on a, on a leash and kills the chicken, that's not in any circumstance can be considered a dangerous animal. <coughs> so again, same concept with short-term rentals. We tried to keep it simple, direct. And this is not a proposal, but a framework if the commission is interested. Well, I think there's a lot of people in this community that are interested in this. This is coming back up. Yeah. How many eggs does a, a chicken produce generally? I I have no idea. Because you know, we're saying six chickens per residence. But a family of four would have maybe four to eight eggs a day, right? So could we if we knew that factor, we could do a regulation based on the number based on the average family size. Instead, it's just some random number we're pulling off of the wall. You know what I mean? Because I find I find six alarming. I'm, I'm, I don't think chickens belong in the city limits. They're farm animals. I don't believe cows belong in the city either. But or horses. So the farm animals. So to me, if that was something that you could correlate, and maybe you can't, I don't know. But I do have that concern and a concern about the waste and the odors. Uh, just from the farmer's perspective, <laughs> that side, and it just says just the, average, the average chicken lays one egg per day. Yeah. After a peak. After a peak. So the family of four is only going to eat. And I'm not eating for this, and I'm reading out the facts. So <laughs> I can tell They're you. only eating four eggs a day. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, so that could be, I mean, to come up with a, yeah. a, a, a basis a or a right number. The number of you know, chickens. Obviously, like, that's, also make, that's also making assumptions of chickens. chickens that produce and chickens that, and the families that only want to produce for themselves as opposed to. You know, I'll have open mind, <laughs> open minded perception to this because it's no different. I'm looking at it and I know I'm reverting back to short term rental. You're going to have people that keep great upkeep manage their appropriate facilities meet all the requirements maintain their chickens accordingly and probably have some of the cleanest chicken coops in all of town but then you're going to have some if not a majority because when it comes to being specifically i guess anal or ocd when it comes to livestock i would say that numbers <laughs> fewer than more uh, it's just the people that won't upkeep. And then with us passing this, and it's technically not, it's just we're passing code and then infrastructure will be done in behind the scenes. Who manages, who regulates when a complaint is filed or, I mean, it's, we don't want to create a permit or a procedure or create more work responsibility or management like i don't know if that's animal coal or control police like whatever the infraction for your infrastructure but i just see basically more issues than good but at the same time i'm not going to punish people that do right 
either. And I hate that because I do believe in fair market and free market for that matter. So, I mean, I guess that would be the same in consideration for the people that want chickens that they're going to do what's right. I don't know. So, I don't, I don't so know. Process. Yeah. So process wise, if, if, if the majority, the consensus of the commission is, is that this is not a problem, then we as staff would share that with the city council because they were, they asked to continue the discussion and they may then decide uh, either to, uh, to accept that as the community's expectations. They may decide that they would like to ask the city staff to proceed with the proposal, Correct. which would then still come back to you if it's a zoning ordinance amendment. This is, if the commission though feels that this is something that you feel is appropriate, there's a consensus there, we can start a process now to bring back a formal proposal zoning ordinance amendment for your consideration. Where those other specifics, like numbers of chickens and even other standards, if you wish, could be considered. This is the second time city council's asked us to do this. Is that correct? Well, I would say the really the first time. Uh, the first discussion when it came in front of the planning commission in a study session, that, that was a lot of citizen input oh, as well. I thought, I thought but that citizen time. input did go to the city council. <laughs> oh, yeah. But city staff said, well, this is a yeah, I know. This right. was a good item to so ask. 34 yeah. individuals in total that were in attendance. There were views expressed both in support and opposition. So I'm assuming there was more in favor than there was opposition. Not that that's a factoring matter. Yeah, a listening but, session on the topic, and you're going to attract more people that are interested in favor. I mean, I like our current rules. What's. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I mean, because here's here's the deal. Fine. If I, I get it when we're looking at it in the perspective that I own an acre or two acres or let's just say three to five acres inside of city limits, do should I have limitations of owning chickens? Probably not, because you meet the parameter of the original code. You have far enough setbacks, and you meet all the other. So really, what we're talking about is residential neighborhoods, so tight confined areas where we have opposition for short-term rentals, but yet we don't have opposition for, well, I mean, in some sense, but it's like, we don't want a short-term rental in our neighborhood, but we want some chickens. Like to me, I just, just this is backwards is all get out. <laughs> it's like, but here in our neighboring communities have this. Well, uh, not all, you don't see Carney on that board. And I'm not going to continue to compare ourselves to Carney, but at the same time, they seem to be doing something right with all the expansion development. And their average median sales price is a half million and above now. And it seems like if we're going to mimic a model, let's mimic a model that's obviously working and bringing revenue and tax dollars to the community. That's my personal experience. So you don't want anything here that doesn't produce tax dollars. It's that's in a sense we need to have a good economy and a good infrastructure and continuous growth. If we're going to capitalize on tourism, absolutely. And that is the kind of ideology that's going to build a healthy community that can be self-sustainable, have infrastructure, capital improvements, nicer features, updated bridges, sidewalks, everything else. I mean that's how that's how that works. Uh, that's how we get more funding for our school systems. That's how we get more funding for third party organizations, donations and charitable work. I mean, you, the more you bring to your community as you continue growth, you're spreading like the cost and the expense of all of those things. So in a sense to your question, yes. Um, but I mean, again, this Mr. is my chicken. Did you have a thought? No, I mean, I'm not for it and I'm not against it. I mean, I'm more against it than I am for it, but that's my thought too. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not even saying that I'm against it. I'm saying I liked our original policy. You have to have a significant piece of ground to house and operate chickens. Like, I'm so I'm not saying I'm against. No, it, I agree with you saying you got five acres there. That's it, a little more land, or even an acre to three acres. Like, you're you're talking a substantial amount of ground to where you're not going to create a nuisance to your neighbor because you have the square footage in your initial lot. But when you get into the confined areas, and, and like I said, again, I don't want to punish people that they're probably great chicken owners out there. And they're going to be potentially great chicken owners because my guess is this will proceed and some <laughs> regulation will be adopted. But I don't, th I think you're going to have more that are not than they are in favor. But maybe I'm totally wrong. Uh, I'm just saying I like our original policy. Commissioner Van Teel. I can go both ways. I mean, I know I'm, I'm generally not opposed to it, but I'm also like, I kind of kind of like it. But I mean, I know in, in our first meeting, like, I think it can be done. And I think that you would have quite a few people that would be just fine. But does that mean that necessarily if you need to? I mean, I'm on the fence. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I would say a lot of people go ahead. No, Mr. Gruber's all about you. Give us yes. her two cents. Well, I, obviously, I, I was at the meeting that we had the 34 people here that were interested in this, and uh, there's, there's more interest in it than, than most things that we do. Um, and I, I personally think that there's nothing harmful in it. We're talking about six chickens in a really restricted area that we have to have. So it's not going to be like somebody who wants 100 chickens. It's, it's very small. Now you just think of, think of the person that never has raised an animal or a chicken. And, oh, it's cute. Let's go buy six chickens and raise them. And, here they are, and oh, what do we do now? We'll just open the gate, let them out, and you're good to go. Well, I know, but I'm just, that's, that's how I see it. So now when we pass this, only the only way you're even knowledgeable is if someone files a complaint. Once this this rule, so you really, we, you will know that there's, you don't know that they have a coop, you don't know that they have these things until someone formally files a complaint. Um, which I think will happen. Yeah, and again, this is not a formal proposal. No, I know it's not formal, but right. as it's drafted right now, you would not know if they meet setback requirements. You will not know if they have the appropriate not permitting or inspection process. You will not know any of those things. So as of right now, we will know nothing collectively as a city until a complaint is filed. I'm not going for form for a shame, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I do enjoy it. Hey, Commissioner Barnes. Again, we said the same thing, form for a shame. <laughs> Backyard fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for it. I believe we ought to stick with what the current standards are, because right now we have folks in town that are grow have chickens and, and nobody's doing anything to police them, and they're outside of the code currently. So if we did something like that, who knows what kind of a mess we have? I believe we stick with what we have. So am I getting a consensus, uh, at least of the majority of the commission, that you're, there's not the majority of an interest to move forward? Just a minute. <laughs> so it's going to be Bill now. <laughs> hey, he's a neighbor. And, and, and in the process, you know, we'll report, we are reporting the discussion, as we always do, of your, of your valuable work to the city council. And they may accept that as, as a good uh, understanding of the community's thoughts and positions, they may come back to city staff and direct us to proceed. Well, I was going to say that that's the case. They ultimately make the final decision. Yeah, but they want to hear your valuable input, and I just, we want to be able to to share that. So we got a basis. Is that the consent, the majority consensus? I mean, we're only really missing two, so I guess. And they'll know who's here or not. Yeah. Well, and uh, like I said, I might get their opinion. Okay. Well, that's uh, good. That's very helpful for us to know. Thanks for the discussion. 